the Lord has given. I'm taking my text today from the book of Psalms, chapter number 27 and verse number 13. Oh, I forgot to dismiss the classes, and I got teachers just waiting outside, waiting on them. You may be dismissed classes. Amen. And uh, for us in the, in the sanctuary, we'll be looking uh, in the book of Psalms, chapter 27, and verse number 13. Amen. Psalms 27 and verse number 13. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Psalms 27 and verse number 13. It said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And by the help of the Lord, I'd like to speak on this subject, the goodness of God. The goodness of God. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray, O oh God, that you would touch our hearts and help us, Lord, that we would be drawn closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the Word of God. Amen. There is a, there is a statement that some churches, uh, the pastor will have fun with the congregation. They, they join together, and the pastor will say, God is good, and the church says all the time, and then the church, and then the pastor will say all the time, and the church will say God is good, and they might play it back and forth a little bit, but truly, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. There's not a time when you can't begin to think about the goodness of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Another song that says, When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me. Now, that song wasn't written yesterday. Amen. That's been around a while. Amen. My soul cries out, Hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. I thank God that he is good. Amen. And, uh, and there's another song that says, The Lord's been good, the Lord's been good. The Lord's been good to me. Amen. And uh, I thank God for His goodness every day. Amen. Sometimes when we talk about the goodness of the Lord, amen, we classify His goodness, amen. Unfortunately, uh, many times we classify the goodness of the Lord to a bank account. Amen. If my bank account has money in it, God's been good to me. If my bank account doesn't have money in it, well, I'm not so sure about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. But I can tell you whether you have a dollar in your bank account or ten dollars in your bank account, God's been good to us. Oh, hallelujah. All the time. It doesn't matter, amen, what comes my way. The goodness of God has more to do, amen, than just a bank account. Others think that the goodness of God is tied to our health. Amen. If I'm well, then God's been good to me. If I'm sick, then God hasn't been good to me. Amen. If I'm well, if everything is going all right, and I can run the aisles, and I can go like 90, God's been good to me. But if I don't feel like walking one step, then maybe God hasn't been that good to me. I'm here to tell us today, amen, God's goodness isn't, uh, isn't tied to my health. Whether I have health in my body 
or whether I have sickness in my body, God's been good to me. Oh, hallelujah. He's been mighty good to me. Every other benefit that I have, yes, I thank God for my health. Yes, I thank God that he's taken care of me and I didn't go to bed last night hungry. Amen. But God's been good to me. Amen. In spite of everything that I might have done, I look at the hand of God upon my life and I have to say, it's the goodness of God. Amen. That's in me. Amen. It's not me, but it's the hand of God and God's goodness that is upon my life. Oh, hallelujah. Goodness defined Amen. Goodness defined by Scripture is found in the book of Exodus. I, as kind of just as I was reading through this week and uh, uh, through my Bible reading for the uh, for the year, and and uh, I'm over in the book of Psalms, and and as I got over there, I saw that word goodness, and uh, and the Lord just kind of stopped me, and He said, "Why don't you look at that word for a few minutes?" And so I thought. Goodness, where is that word first mentioned? And how do you define goodness? Amen. Now, I, I know that good is a derivative or it is, a, it is the, the primary word of goodness. But I, I wanted to find out, amen, goodness as because it deals with, whenever it's dealing with the goodness of the Lord or goodness most of the time in Scripture is dealing with the goodness of the Lord. Amen. It's not dealing with the goodness of man because man can be good today and bad tomorrow. But the God that I serve will always be good in my life. Oh, hallelujah. He'll always be there for His goodness and His mercy's sake. Oh, hallelujah. But Exodus chapter number 33, amen, Exodus chapter number 33 and verse number 18 is the first time, amen, that, uh, that we find the word goodness in use, amen. And, uh, and it was Moses that, added, that brought the question or the, or, the, uh, or the request to God. He said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. He said, I want to see, amen, the glory of the Lord. Now, many times whenever we talk about, and, I, and I'm trying to get that, i got to sum up a bunch into a little space of time, amen, but when we think about the glory, amen, in the Old Testament, amen, it could be relegated to, amen, a cloud by day and a fire by night. But Moses said, I know there's more to your glory than a little fire and a, and a cloud that covers Israel. You're greater than that. Show me your glory. He had been up in the mountain not long before the request, and he had watched as the finger of God had etched on tables of stone the Ten Commandments, but Moses said, I know that I've seen your power, but I want to see more of your glory. I want to see the thing, amen, that you would say where your glory would be derived from. If I could see the root of your glory, then I would be able to comprehend you a little bit more. God, show me your glory. Amen. And the Lord began to respond to him. And he said, I will make all my goodness, amen, to pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. So he said, here's where glory comes from. It comes from my goodness. 
Amen. And in order for my goodness to pass before you, you're going to see, amen, three things that's going to happen in order for my goodness to be displayed, amen, as a revelation. Number one, amen, my name will be proclaimed. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to know today, amen, that the goodness of God is tied to a revelation that Jesus Jesus is the mighty God. Hallelujah. And there's no one before him and there's no one after him. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and he is the end. He is the first and he is the last. I'm glad today to know, hallelujah, who Jesus is. That's his goodness today. Not everybody in the world has a revelation that Jesus is that mighty God. Some think he's a some think that he was a great teacher, some think that he was a physician, some think that he might have been a scholar. Amen. But I am here to tell you he is the mighty God. Oh, hallelujah. And when you, amen, come to the knowledge that he is the mighty God, amen, there's something about the goodness of God that begins to be demonstrated within your life. Oh, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The second thing that he said, I'll make my goodness pass before you and proclaim the name of the Lord. He said, I'm going to be gracious to whom I will be gracious. He said the second thing about my goodness, it, it deals with grace. It deals, amen, with the unmerit, excuse me, the unmerited favor of God. It deals with you don't deserve it, but I'm giving it to you anyway. I'm going to show you grace when you deserve judgment. I'm going to come to you and wrap my arms around you and show you my love when you really deserve me to put my hand on you and say, get out of my face. But I'm going to show you grace. Hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, amen, it's the grace of God, amen, that wrapped itself around us. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast I thank God today hallelujah that his goodness is tied to his name but his goodness is tied to his grace the third thing he said is I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy amen how many times have we failed God how how many times have we disappointed him? Strike one, strike two, strike three, and we're out is what they say in baseball. But God has said strike four, strike five, strike six till 70 times seven and I'll still forgive you. His mercy endureth to all generations and when you see the mercy of God, you're talking about the goodness of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I'm thankful today for the goodness of God that brings, amen, mercy our way. Oh, praise God. My daughter just came in. I see that I have got a little bit too loud. Excuse me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm reading from 34 of Exodus. Chapter 34 and verse number 5. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed, amen, the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth. When he began, when he began to speak, the Lord said, let me tell you about my goodness. My goodness is tied, amen, to mercy. My goodness is tied to grace. My goodness is tied to long-suffering. Hey, amen, being long-suffering. My goodness is tied to truth. 
I will keep mercy to thousands and I will forgive iniquities and transgression and sin. He said, I want you to know that when you talk about my goodness, what you're talking about, when you talk about the true goodness of the Lord, you're talking about the man or woman that has repented of their sins. Amen. And the filth of this world is gone from them. Amen. And the chain that has begun to take place in their life. Amen. Suddenly God says, Amen. Look at my goodness. They deserve hell, but they're on the way to heaven. Hallelujah. They deserve judgment, but they're reaching out in mercy. Hallelujah. They deserve, Amen, my hatred to them, but instead I'm showing mercy unto their life. I'm talking about the goodness of God. It's the name of the Lord. It's his goodness. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's the, the definition is goodness. Goodness defined is t- defined when we talk about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. We're talking about the mercy, the grace, and the long suffering, his name, all tied up together. So when you begin to read the scripture in Psalms 23, and it says. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters, and he restoreth my soul. And he leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. You know what he's saying? I'm telling you about the goodness of God. I'm telling you about a God that takes care of me in every aspect of my life. He takes care of my physical needs, and more importantly, He has taken care of my spiritual needs. He's there for me. That's goodness in my life. And then He said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know what He was saying? He was saying, When I came into the the house of God. I am a testimony of the goodness of God. Whenever I serve the Lord with gladness, when I put everything that I have into his kingdom, amen, I'm showing the world this is the goodness of God. It's not Kent Bollinger, the thing that is in me, amen, it's the goodness of God that I'm here, amen, I don't deserve to be here, it's the goodness of God, oh hallelujah, God's been good in my life. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. In, in the book of Psalms, chapter number 34, and, uh, and verse number 8, he makes this statement and he says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now you tell me that that's talking about natural food, and I'll tell you, you're crazy as all get out. Because he don't want you to take a bite of his flesh. He wants you to taste of his goodness. Now how do I taste of his goodness? It's reaching into mercy. It's reaching into grace. It's reaching into his name. And whenever I begin to, amen, you know, and uh, just uh, let's kind of bring it down, bring it down into, into, into the day. In the last month, I'm sure that all of you have been saints and have never done anything wrong in the last month. Never had one bad thought. Never said one bad thing. Never thought one thing wrong. If you, if you raise your hand, <laughs> I'll ask you to come first. <laughs> but you're here today. Because you've tasted of the goodness of God. Because when you, when, you, when you did sin, whenever you did make that mistake, you said, oh God, forgive me. And God helped me. And God said, let me show you my goodness. 
I'm going to give you what man won't give you. Man has said two times and you're out. Three times and you're out. But I'm going to give you what you didn't deserve. I'm going to give you goodness. Amen. I'm going to reach to you whenever you didn't deserve it. And the psalmist said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, who in the world wouldn't want to taste that? To reach out and say, I've been dealing with condemnation. I've been dealing with guilt. I've been dealing with the shame of my past. I've been dealing with everything that, that's back there that just tries to haunt me. And the psalmist said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Man, if you ever needed an excuse to pray, I give you, I'll give you a good excuse. Because when you start to pray, you start it out with repentance. And whenever you start in repentance, ah, you get to taste and see of the goodness of God. Oh, hallelujah. Well, praise God. Let's love the Lord for just a moment. Amen. I love you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness and mercy. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> In, uh, in Psalms chapter chapter 52 and verse number 1, the Bible said the goodness of God endureth forever. Psalm 65 and verse number 11, he said thou crownest the year with thy goodness and thy paths drop fatness. In Psalm 73 and verse 1, truly God is good to Israel, even such as of our clean heart. Now which fella was it that was able to clean up his own heart? No, it wasn't them that cleaned up their heart. It was the goodness of God that helped them to get that thing clean. You can do whatever type of good work that you want to do, and you'll never get all the junk that we've done, amen, cleaned out of your life. But one trip to an altar, one trip to a baptismal tank, and being baptized in the precious name of Jesus Christ does more good than anything good that I could ever do. Oh, hallelujah. Truly, God is good to Israel and to all that are of a good, uh, of a clean heart. In Psalms chapter number 80, 86, in verse number 5, For thou, Lord, art good. Now here's, here's how I know you're good. You're ready to forgive. You're plenteous in mercy unto all that call upon thee. He said, the way I know your goodness is because of forgiveness. And the way I know that you're good is because I know there's mercy. Hallelujah. Every time that I call upon you, I know that you're good because of forgiveness and mercy. I see your goodness every day when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that He's done for me. It's the only reason that you'd ever look back, amen, at Egypt, at the sin of your past. The only reason you'd ever look back at the things you did, amen, that were sinful is to think about the goodness of God that reached down to you while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that He's done for me, oh, I was a wretched man. Oh, I didn't deserve, amen, the grace of God. Hallelujah. But the goodness of God reached to me. But the goodness of God touched my heart. But God was good to me. Oh, hallelujah. Whenever I was discouraged and didn't feel like going on. Oh, God was good to me. Hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of God, He's been a good God in my life. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. It's interesting, the scripture in Psalms 100, as it starts in verse number 4, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, 
and bless his name. Why? Why enter his gates with thanksgiving? Why enter his courts with praise? Why are you thankful unto him? And why are you blessing his name? For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. He said the reason that we enter his gates with thanksgiving is because God is good. Amen. The reason that we enter his courts with praise is because God has been good to us. The reason that we are thankful and we bless his name is because of the goodness of God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Now I say, and I, and, I, and I make this as a question to myself and to us as a congregation. Have we shown God how thankful we are, amen, for his goodness to the best of our ability? The psalmist said, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Oh, you've been so good to me. Oh, you've been so good to me, God. In spite of everything that I've done, in spite of everything that was in my past, God, you've been good to me. Hallelujah. In spite of all of the things, amen, that, that I would say, let's not talk about that now. God, you've been good to me. I'm going to enter your gates with thanksgiving. And I'm going to enter your courts with praise. I'm just going to praise you for a while. Because you're good. You've been good to me, God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm, I'm on a, let's drop over to the 103rd Psalm. Verse number 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things. Let's see the satisfying of the mouth. Number one, he forgave me who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Number two, he healed me, who healeth all thy diseases. Number three, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who redeemed me. Who crowned thee with blessing, or with, with loving kindness and tender mercies, who blesses me. And then, who satisfies my mouth. So for five things, Amen. The Lord does to us. He's our forgiver. He's our healer. He's our redeemer. He's our blesser. And He is our satisfier. And when we tie that up, to, uh, up together, I've got to say God's been good. Oh, hallelujah. Psalms 107 and verse number 8 says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. There's four times in that particular chapter that those words are repeated, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. But with each time, that praise to God for His goodness is tied to something that God did within the life. In verse number 9, amen, it's tied to He satisfies the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. I say today that we ought to praise Him for His goodness because He fills the hungry soul and He satisfies the longing soul. In Psalms 107, verse number 16, He hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. He is the deliverer. Hallelujah. Amen. It's only, it's only in the church that a person doesn't have to say, I started out an alcoholic. Amen. 
and I have been delivered. Only in the church can a person say that. In the world, they say, I started out with one drink, and I took a second one, and now I'm an alcoholic for life. Once an alcoholic, I'm always going to be an alcoholic. Once a drug addict, I'll always be a drug addict. Oh, hallelujah. But when you step in the church, he breaks the gates. He breaks the bars. And he says, I'll be your deliverer. You don't have to live, amen, with the, with the captivity of your past. I am good to you. Oh, hallelujah. Psalms 107 and verse number 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So if he is, he, his goodness is tied to a spiritual healing within the life of an individual. Amen. It's a spiritual healing in this particular passage. He sent his word and healed them. But what about my past? Look at this in my past. What about this in my past? Amen. Brother G.T. Haywood, several years ago, the story was referred to me. Amen. And, he, and they said that, he had, uh, he had had a man in his church that came to him and said, yeah, Pastor, I don't know how to, uh, if I can live for God because I have so many things that I've done in my past and I can't outlive that. And, and, and Brother G.T. Haywood, he went, to his, uh, he went to the office and he began to pray. And, uh, and from what the story was told, he spent uh, quite a bit of time in fasting and praying. And on the following Sunday, he said, Brother, I have a word from God for you. And he started to sing this song. When gloom and sadness whisper, you've sinned, there's no use to pray. It's then I look away to Jesus and he tells me to say, I see a crimson stream of blood. It flows from Calvary. Its waves which reach the throne of God are sweeping over me. Oh, hallelujah. You know what he was saying? He was saying, start talking about the goodness of God. Start talking about a God, a man that looks at you and says, I'm not concerned about, amen, your present and your past as much as I am about your future. I want to change you and make something new in you so that I can display my goodness. Hallelujah. Every day that you live for God, every day that you serve God, it's another testimony of the goodness of God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Psalms 107 and verse number 29, He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Amen. Then are they glad, because they be quiet. So He bringeth them, amen, into their hearts. He said he makes the storm a calm. I can tell you from experience that he doesn't only have the power to stop wind and waves on the Sea of Galilee, but he has the ability to step into the, into the storm that we may have in our life. Amen. When everything seems to be turning upside down, we say, what in the world am I going to do? Amen. If you can look at Jesus, he's going to step to the bow of the boat and he's going to say, I'm still going to give you peace. I'm going to calm your storm. I, 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 I'd like to let you know that when he calms a storm, it's the goodness of God. It's the goodness of God that he calms the storm. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready, ready to close here in just a couple of seconds. In Psalms... 33 and verse number 5 he loveth righteousness and judgment and the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord and the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord I somehow think he's stepping beyond looking at the starlit skies and looking at a sunset and looking perhaps at a beautiful scenery a man of nature I think that God, a man, created us to display His goodness. I think the reason that we're in the church is He wants the whole earth 
to be full of His goodness. Hallelujah. And every time that somebody looks, amen, in your direction, they don't want, he, God doesn't want them to say, my, would you look at Reg? But what they want him to say, what, they, what God wants to say, he wants them to say, my, would you look at what God did to that man? Amen. He, he doesn't want us to say, would you look at Linda? He wants to say, look at what God did in that life. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and for the individual say, I, I know, I got a reputation that they can curl your hair. They can mess you up big time. But it was the goodness of God that brought me here. It was the goodness of God that touched my life. It was God that brought me into the place. And, and I say, I say of myself, I don't know your story, but you don't know mine. I thank God for His mercy. And I thank God for His goodness. Oh, hallelujah. Now, one more verse that I'd like to, actually two, that I'd like to bring our attention to. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. And then, verse number three of chapter six of Isaiah. Isaiah six and three. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. He tied holiness to the glory of God and that the earth is full of glory. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring something in here just for a minute just to kind of put it into our, into our minds so we can think about this. I'm not getting holy to get God but I do get his goodness and whenever I get his goodness I try to be holy because I want to show the world his goodness and he's holy so I want to show the world his holiness that's the reason I, I may not listen to some of the things other people listen to that's the reason that I may not go some places other people go to. That's a reason, amen, that my life may be different from somebody else's. Because, not because I'm trying to get a holier-than-thou attitude, but I'm trying to demonstrate the goodness of God. It's His mercy that brought me this far. And any holiness that I have is because of mercy. And anything that has set me upright, it's because of mercy. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I'm going to give you the final scripture. It's in the New Testament. It's in Romans chapter number 2. And we're getting ready. And I am closing with this. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. He said, I want you to understand that the purpose of the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of God is not to cast us out, but the goodness of God is to say, I know you think that I'm a judge for the bad, but I want you to understand my goodness is trying to reach to you and make you so that you can come to heaven. I'm calling for repentance. I'm calling for a life that would be separate. If I can, I don't want anybody, amen, to make a wrong choice. But my goodness is to reach to you, amen, each one of us. And his goodness is saying, I want to show you salvation. I want to be good to you. And you do, and I do it through your repentance. For if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Talking about the goodness of God. Let's stand together in this place this morning. I thank God for His goodness. Next time I say, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that He's done for me, help me not to be thinking about the financial aspect, but help me
me to think about his mercy and his grace. Oh, Lord Jesus, I love you. I praise you. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, when all he has done for me, my soul. Hang on to that with all.